Hey everybody, hope you're having a good day, night, evening, second Tuesday of last week, anything like that. Dave here, Syndicated Pipe Club once again, and as always, I have Greg the Badger Piper with me. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Uh, I'm doing much better this week, much like you are, uh, from what I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good at modulating tones and whatnot, all those years in the call center, but to... Uh, just to let everybody know, because the last episode I did mention the interesting goings on regarding insurance companies, leased vehicles, and car accidents. Well, two weeks ago, actually, because last week there was no episode. Reasons. Anyway. Well, I can um, get into that after you're done. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, it worked out better than I expected, to be honest. Um, it worked out as good as it could be expected. Uh, we're fully covered, and... Uh, so we will owe nobody anything, and maybe we'll get a little money back. We won't be able to replace our vehicle, but we will have, you know, we got our bikes. We're, we're good. We, we can get around. Excellent. And uh, the reason why we didn't have a show last week was because uh, there was, uh, we had a severe thunderstorm warning over here. Oh, we and, had it uh, too. We, yeah. Yeah, which uh, we weren't sure whether we were going to actually get it or not. Uh, but like the past two days, uh, we had been rocked by storms. Like there was one that they didn't even uh, predict like the night before. And it just popped up out of nowhere. And it was a pretty uh, nasty one that left a lot of uh, uh, branches down. And uh, yeah, like our power went out for like probably a good half hour, 45 minutes at one point uh, because of uh, just a everything even like my name I, I think i did i send you pictures of it you did you sent me pictures um, of your neighbor's yeah, yeah. yard yeah yeah my yeah my neighbor's yard like he had some like he didn't have any trees fall down but they might as they might as well have been small trees because they were like huge like main branches that fell mm -hmm. and they took like chunks of uh, the trunk with it so uh really nasty stuff <laughs> somehow we were lucky enough that uh all we got were some minor branches that fell but uh, nothing, nothing too bad. Yeah, there's nothing but, wrong with that. That that's for sure. Yeah. But the whole funny thing about it all was, uh, so we canceled it because I was like, well, if it's anything like the other storms, uh, you're just to be on the safe side. We shouldn't record because I can't guarantee that we'll have power. <laughs> yeah, we didn't for sure. even get rain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, really? But again, like it's better safe than it, sorry. It, was, yeah, it really it was is better safe than sorry. Yeah. And uh, it's also funny because it kind of fits into our uh, episode today. That, yeah. Uh, we're going to be talking about it. Yeah, we're finally people getting back to Avatar The Last Ever Bender, Season 1, Episode 12, The Storm, which is, you know, for all intents and purposes, uh, a good back, a bit of a backstory download for both uh, Aang and Zuko. Yeah, um, it really... Uh, is a good episode uh like for being like a flashback episode i think it was a, a nice one to uh nicely done and it definitely humanizes zuko for sure for which, sure of course he you know he has he certainly has had his moments of uh you know you know to humanize him but uh, I, I think of this one especially because you get to see him pre-Scar. Yeah, the only time, too, that you get to see him pre-Scar is right now in this episode we're talking about. So if you haven't watched yet, stop us now. Watch the video or, or the podcast, whatever. Just stop, pause, go watch it. We're not going anywhere. Come back and we will continue on from there. All right. Everybody back? Good. All right. So, before we get too far into this, what are you smoking tonight, Greg? Yes, uh, I am smoking uh, Peterson's, formerly Dunhill's, Elizabethan mixture. Nice. In, I've heard nothing my, but good uh, things about it. Never tried it. Yeah, it's a really nice uh, Virginia Creek uh, blend. You know, um, I used to be a big Vapor fan. It's kind of tailed off a little bit. Like I, I still like it, but I, I'm not as crazy right, as I, right. I once was for it. But this is a solid one. I nice. give it two thumbs up. Good um, stuff. And it's actually in my uh, Peterson uh, that I got from uh, Dublin. Uh, the Petersons from Dublin. 
Uh, it's actually a filtered Petersons, but I just have a, a filter replacement there. Right, right. Well, me, I am smoking uh, something you can't even get anymore. While you cannot get the Dunhill version of what you're smoking, you can still get the Peterson version. But I'm smoking Mac Beeren's HH Vintage Syrian, and simply because there is no more uh, Syrian uh, Latakia being produced. When it's gone, it's gone, but I still have some, and I'm smoking it tonight in this nice church warden that was gifted to me by the uh, president of the local pipe club that hasn't met since August 2020. <laughs> so, COVID has killed our meetings. Yep. Uh, but that's where this pipe life comes in, so. Yes. Because those are still going on. If you want to get on, get get uh, get in on those, let me know. Greg knows too. We Absolutely. we got the information. We'll gladly pass it on. That's that's what it's there for. Absolutely. Even though I haven't been able to make it in a while, uh, I highly recommend it. Because if I could make it scheduling wise, I would be there. Oh yeah, it, it's just it, it's a it's a good group of guys. Um, I've only been making every other week myself because well reasons. Most most recently reasons being car accident, but you know that happens. But shall we dive into the episode? Yes. <laughs> um, and, and the episode starts off with a you know, pretty amusing dream sequence. Uh, oh, yes, very much so. With the kind, and it kind, you know, kind of a foreshadow, which a good dream sequence always does. Oh, yeah, for sure. But... I think the funniest part of that thing ain't the, it's not the it's not the giant uh, Momo with Katara riding between his ears, it's not Sokka doing the doing the doing the gliding and doing the ear bending to make the glider work because well we all know Sokka he doesn't have any powers whatsoever, but I think the most amusing thing for me was the way Appa was flying with his legs out like bird wings. <laughs> you know I didn't even notice that, uh, but uh, that's. Uh... I appreciate that. Um, one thing I also appreciated was afterwards, uh, uh, Sokka, uh, Sokka said that uh, he had a strange dream as well, and that uh, Momo was talking to him. He said some very rude things. Which, uh, to me, is foreshadowing of another future dream sequence that will be happening in Season 3. Yep. But at least in that dream sequence, Momo doesn't say any rude things to Appa or anything like that. They just have a general conversation. Uh, no, they, I mean, they argue. Oh, that's right, because then they go all samurai and ninja and stuff, and they fight back and forth. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's funny, but it's well, weird. It, it's, yeah, it's meant to be. Uh, it, it's one of those things... <laughs> I know we're jumping ahead to season three. We are here, jumping way ahead. Where, like, I, was, I was working on something in... Uh, the office, which is now my son's room, and my wife was watching Avatar. And I come out to get something from the kitchen, and I come out at that precise moment where uh, Appa and uh, Momo are fighting in, in that dream sequence, and I'm just kind of looking and just kind of, what is going on? <laughs> I I, <laughs> I feel like I've missed something important. Yeah, there's a lot that goes on between this dream sequence and that one, so. Yeah, just uh, just keep watching with us, folks. You'll you'll get there because we'll get there yeah. eventually. Yeah, no, I just I'm sure they didn't even think that they would do that one day, but uh, that was just a fun little kind of foreshadowing. Oh, absolutely. All right, so yeah, like that's that's all well and good. It's it's foreshadowing, you know, the the coming storm, the storm of Aang's past because we you know, we get to see Kiazzo and uh, he goes to dust in it, and it, it's a bunch of stuff. It's just a bunch of fun. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, it really, you know, like it explains a lot about Aang. Oh, I absolutely, think, and it does. And, and Aang's personality. You definitely feel for him. Um, Very much so. I, I, I know I did. Um, I, you really sympathize with them and uh, just uh, the story of someone that's being forced to grow up way faster than they want to. And, uh, well, yeah, it was even said um, 
during the flashback that Aang's very parts of the flashback um, that uh, they they wouldn't have told him till he was 16. At the time, he's only 12. I told him a whole four years early because they figured they needed the Avatar sooner than normal. Mm-hmm. Although, uh, I also... Um, I wonder if a lot of... If there's other cultures that uh, do the whole, like, picking four items out of, like, a group of them. Um, if that's, like, a common thing, because that... <clears throat> Same sort of idea happened on Lost with uh, um, the character of John Locke. Uh, he was, when he was young, he was uh, told to, he was kind of presented with a, a number of items and was told to pick a couple uh, that appealed to him. And that was like to kind of reveal like his person obviously it's not for an avatar kind of thing but it was like meant right. for, like a, a deeper reasoning behind uh that so uh i might have to look into that uh, i may have to do some sort of uh, version of it for my son when he gets uh, <laughs> a little bit older just uh, like dad what are we doing this is weird you never know you may have the future avatar right there in your midst already i have no One idea what the hell he's gonna bend but <laughs> Uh, well, right now he's food bending. <laughs> he is, yeah, we are doing baby love eating. And, uh, it's the best way to go. It really is. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it sometimes. <laughs> no, it doesn't. We're, we're doing that right now, too. It's it's not. Uh, it's, I've done it three other times, and it, it's always the same way. It's always messy. There's always choking, and it's always messy. Because yeah. the first mess is them putting the food on the floor, then they're choking, and then they're puking up whatever they choked on. So there's your there's your messy choke messy right there. Rule of thumb, parents that are new, that's how it works. Yeah. Unless you're lucky. The dog the dog is loving it though. That's the advantage you have over me, sir. I have no dog to eat the food off the floor. I have to sweep yeah. it up every night. It's not fun. I swear. Our daughter drops enough food on the floor to, to, to feed a small country. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he... My son would, but a lot of it manages to get caught between him and the seat and doesn't even make it to the floor. So sometimes I'm just like, oh, buddy, you didn't get a lot of what uh, my son dropped, so here you go. I'll give you a couple of these things. And I'm sure the dog appreciates it. I really am. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, now off of kids and back to the show. I think out of the two um, background sequences, I, I think Zuko's is the more interesting of the two. Sure, you know, we find out uh, that Aang ran away because he found out he was the Avatar and um, the other monks on the monk council, for lack of a better term for it, were going to send him to the Eastern Air Temple to continue his training because they thought Kiatso was just not the guy for the job. Um, that that really sums it up. That that's what that's what happened. It, like in like ten seconds. That, there's the whole. There's Ang's half of the episode. Well, there's that, and then um, there's uh, his interactions with the other kids that are in the monastery, and uh, and you know I I think that like it affected me a lot more because I uh, I don't know I could kind of relate to it. Oh, not. I, I can kind of understand it from his point of view and everything where, uh, you know, they, uh, you know, he teaches them how to, you know, do the, the air scooter and yeah, comes back yeah. after, after his training and, uh, they're all doing it and having fun and they've invented a game, but they won't let him play because whatever team has him, uh, will be at a, an advantage. And things like, I, what are you talking about? I'm just like you guys, but uh, they don't listen. Yeah, yeah really, because at that particular point in time, sure, it's now known that Aang is the Avatar, but he hasn't mastered anything but airbending yet. He hasn't uh, gone to the Water Tribe, he hasn't gone to the Earth Kingdom, and he hasn't gone to the Fire Nation. So really, at that point in time, he's still just an airbender. Right. There, there's nothing unfair about it. <laughs> so yeah, like uh, from uh, 
from that particular time kind of perspective, being a, having been a kid that was left out of a lot of things because you know I didn't have many friends, I can I can see that. But you know it, it had to hurt even more for Ang because you know these were his friends that were saying, "I'm sorry, bud. We we like you, but." You're too powerful now that you're the Avatar. Even though, like, five yeah. minutes ago, we didn't know, and it was fine. Right. And, uh, yeah, like, it explains a lot of it. Yeah, like, you can tell, you know, obviously, Aang is uh, an obvious extrovert, uh, you know, social butterfly, loves to be with people, and uh, it's like everything that uh, he's encountering is removing him from the things that he's not like he needs as a person and uh and so that's obviously like very uh you know scary for him and i, I think it also kind of shows why he cares so much about uh katara and Sokka. is because they've proven that they you know will stand by him and that they don't, even though he's the avatar, they don't view him any differently. And they, they're they still not, a, you know, they wouldn't exclude him from a game like that if they were going to play it. Like, I remember the when they went to the Air Temple, you know, many episodes ago, you know, Sokka, who doesn't have any bending powers whatsoever, was still willing to play a, a game against Aang that Aang obviously had the advantage at. But that's just how they are for sure so even though like i think you know zuko obviously has and we'll get into zuko in a moment and i think his is really interesting because he right now he's kind of like the antagonist of the show and he has a very complex relationship with his family but uh even though it's a little bit more straightforward when we can kind of uh, guess what happened with ang and everything it's still you know, you feel bad for him. Like, watch, uh, seeing all, all that stuff, you know, play out for him. Yeah, you know, it, it, it does, you know, pull at your heartstrings a bit because you know just what a, a good kid he is and everything, how much it, it has to hurt. Absolutely. And the reason for me, anyway, that uh, Zuko's arc is a lot more interesting is because during the, the first season, we don't spend all that much time with Zuko. Um, Sure, he's got a lot of uh, side side parts, and he's, as you said, he's the main antagonist for this particular point in the season. But uh, he is. Oh, what am I? What am I trying to think here? Hmm. He is. Oh. Shoot. There, there, there's, there's something I'm, there's something I'm trying to get at, and I just the, the words are just eluding me. And that's pretty bad when you're trying to record a podcast and you can't say what you're thinking. Hmm. But it's just more interesting, I think, because as different as the situation actually is, like going into the war meeting and standing up to a general who's obviously doing something that is morally wrong and has is said during um, Iroh's retelling of the situation um, that... Zuko is 100% right in the situation. He spoke out of turn, which apparently is a big no-no, and it insulted the Fire Lord, who just happens to be his father. Yeah, no, um... No, they're, they're both tragic figures in their own way. You know, not in the same way. Yeah. But, you know, like, if they were to sit down and talk and have a conversation, they would probably realize that they have more in common than they realized at first, which I think is probably a good thing to have with your uh, protagonist and your antagonist. Um, and, you know, even with, you know, even if you didn't know what was coming down the road for Zuko and his character, mm -hmm. you can tell that he is a lot more moral and a lot more different than... Uh, most antagonists, especially in a children's show. Yeah, for sure. You know, there's no, like, uh, kind of, like, tragic backstory for someone like, say, well, no, I, I can't really say that because I'm not too familiar with that. I, I was going to say Skeletor, but uh, that, uh, I, 
don't know fully his lore, so I don't want to just, uh, you know, speak out of turn with that. But, uh, um, you know, most, uh, you know, children's villains show, uh, in, in shows like the, like Shredder, you're not, uh, there's no sympathetic backstory for that really pulls your heartstrings for, for the Shredder or Crane or any of those people. And, and that's fine. Like, uh, you can still be a fun villain and, and not have those things, but uh, it, it's what makes Zuko such an interesting and cool character. Yeah, it, it really is. It really is. Um, hmm. There it goes again. Thoughts are just leaving my mind. I've been losing too much sleep over the last three weeks, and I used to go to say something and then blank. It's a good thing we have this background music to cover that. <laughs> We are recording, right? Yes, I've I've been watching the, the the levels and whatnot and making a few adjustments as we've been going. We are recording. I okay, can, I, I, just, I, I can see the wave patterns. It's all good. It's all good. Okay, I just wanted to double check. Um, that would have been but, horrible. Uh, oh. Yeah, um, and and you know, like what's interesting too, like uh, so you know, the episode it starts off with Zuko kind of acting a bit bratty. And, and everything with, uh, you know, kind of disregarding uh, Iroh's warning that the storm was coming and saying, I don't mm -hmm. care, you know, we're, we're going to go to, you know, we're going to still chase the Avatar. And unfortunately for Zuko, you know, the men over here are kind of bitter about it. But then Iroh, uh, you know, takes them aside, you know, for this, you know, the whole purpose of the, you know, the story where, you know, Aang's talking to Katara while they're staying out of the storm. And likewise, Iroh is talking to the men inside the ship away from the storm, which is this cool kind of like dichotomy there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, he, you know, he understands how it looks uh, to his men. And, and, you know, it's partly out of Zuko's immaturity that, uh, you know, he spoke like that, but he, he gives a lot of context that uh, I think, you know, causes his men to rethink their views about him. Absolutely. And uh, even throughout this episode, you, you see that at the near the end of the episode, you see that Zuko does care about his about his men because he's climbing the tower ahead of the who I'm assuming was the captain of the ship. And he's the one to catch and release into the safety of the arms of the captain, the, the man who was hanging from the, the, for all intents and purposes, is the crow's nest. Yeah. And ultimate, and also, too, like, at the, you know, we haven't really mentioned that uh, throughout all of this, uh, the um, three main heroes, uh, Aang, uh, Katara, and uh, Sokka uh, went to a village and uh, Sokka uh, went out to sea with a, a fisherman to try to earn uh, some wages uh, so that uh, to provide for the team. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and they were, uh, while Aang was telling his story to Katara, uh, the wife of the fisherman found them and said that their ship was in danger. So, uh, as what as what is what happens during this season a lot, uh, uh, Zuko's ship crosses paths with Aang uh, as he's flying, and he has this moment of, "Am I going to pursue the Avatar and go into danger to try to catch him, uh, or am I going to watch out for the safety of my men?" And ultimately, he chooses to let Aang uh, continue on and uh, instead get his ship to safety. Yeah, that actually led to uh, one of the, my film favorite lines in in this particular episode. When just just before Ang shows up to rescue the fisherman and Sokka, Sokka goes, goes, "I'm too young to die," and the fisherman goes, "I'm not, but I don't wanna." It's <laughs> great. But yeah, overall that was a, a fairly good episode, and I think we're gonna just call talking about the episode here but there is more yeah we're, we're not ending the episode yet oh um i guess maybe like one final thought too okay um, uh I, 
is that uh, you know a lot of it is uh, and part of it is probably because it's a kid show and everything but it, we're seeing a lot about uh, how these two children are kind of stuck in a, a world of adults and forced to uh, abide by rules they don't quite understand. So with Aang, we have, uh, you know, he's going to be sent to, you know, the other uh, sanctuary to, to train and everything away from all of his friends and his mentor. And in uh, Zuko's case, you know, he's forced to essentially have to sit silently uh, in, in a meal in a meeting otherwise uh, you know he and not and not give his input even though he's uh, which he doesn't do but ultimately pays the price for and so we're, we're seeing that the world of adults can be a cruel one for uh, people with uh, I guess more innocent hearts yeah yeah that's definitely true. But yeah, the the reason we were saying I was saying a moment ago that there's there's more. We're not just ending the episode here is because Greg sent me a link to what I think was a YouTube video um, about the upcoming possible upcoming anyway because it's been talked about for like years now um, live action Avatar um, Netflix is trying to put together. Yes. Now I didn't get a chance to. To watch the video prior to recording so greg's gonna fill us in on it and i'm going to react to this like just like i watched the video because i haven't seen it this uh, there's no front loading here i i don't know what's coming right so, greg why don't you uh let us know what's going on with this video yeah so this this video that i sent uh dave was from a channel called clownfish tv and i trust clownfish tv a lot because they've been right about a lot of stuff they dropped uh info about uh, the He-Man cartoon last year way before anybody else did and that was ultimately ended up proving right uh, even though they ended up actually getting into a little bit of a online controversy with uh, Kevin Smith over it um, but uh, apparently this uh, Netflix live adaptation has been cast and they're, they're getting ready to start filming um, originally, the creators of Avatar the Cartoon were part of the project, but they left it and essentially disavowed it because they were not happy about uh, certain things about the project. And essentially, the story of, that's going to be taking place for this live action Netflix show uh, based on the Avatar The Last Airbender, you know, with these characters, Aang, uh, Katara, Sokka, and uh, Zuko, is that, uh, well, it's going to take place in our world. And so, and, but in modern day. So uh, without, uh, you know, there's no Fire Nation, there's no Water Nipper Tribe, uh, any of that stuff. It's uh, instead going to kind of be like a CW high school kind of show. That's it? That's the problem? Well, yeah. I mean, for me, like, uh, uh, like the reason why like I have an issue with that is that uh, what makes the world of Avatar so interesting is the fact that, uh, you know, it. yes, there's elements of our... Uh, world in it and, and you know certainly like you know the creatures and stuff they're, they're like uh, they tend to be like combinations of our animals and whatnot uh, but it's a fantasy world and I don't think that a story like like for me I think that with already what with what you're working with, I think you're headed to something that's worse than the Shyamalan uh, story, a movie, because at least with the Shyamalan story, yeah, like the names were mispronounced and everything was kind of rushed, but 
for the most part, it stuck true to uh, what was right, uh, you know, true to like the, that, those worlds and everything. I have no issue with that. None okay. whatsoever. And it's simply because you're adapting a show that was put out in cartoon format to live action. And yes, while the technology is out there, as we've seen in The Mandalorian, for you to be able to shoot fantastical fantasy things, so what? So they're putting it in modern day. So the tribes no longer exist. But they're still going to be the bending. I'm assuming the story is going to be modified to fit a more realistic view of the world, but I don't see any problem with that. Like you got to make it so that it's interesting to the current audience. Right. And those of us who love the original, well, we still have it. Right. So and That's true. When, when when you sent me this video, I was expecting something a little bit more controversial than that. Like, I mean, yeah, they they uh, the, the 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 actors that look like they've cast look, look, look to me look like the parts. I mean, and that, and I can, that, I can yeah, see I those people as those characters. Yeah, and I mean, the, and gosh, the the, they, the kid they cast as Aang is twelve years old. Yeah, and they do. And to be fair, in the video, they said, "Hey, you know, like the casting looks like it's spot on." Uh, so, you know, like the, in terms of casting, yes. Uh, my problem is that, uh, and again, this is, uh, I guess, <laughs> uh, and I'm used to this kind of conversation because, uh, you know, I come from uh, like a master's degree in uh, uh, script and screenwriting. And one of the things that is, I had a class on was adapting, yeah, uh, at, uh, like adaptations. And we had to, uh, for that project, we had to adapt uh a project uh, that wasn't in film form and make a film script for it. And there's, and when you do an adaptation, there's multiple different ways that you can do it. You can do it where you're very faithful to the product, uh, you know, uh, to what you're um, adapting, and then uh, you can go in like the complete opposite direction and do something completely crazy, like the story of uh, adaptation by Nicolas Cage. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, very fourth wall meta breaking, um, and you know, like, will some people enjoy? You know, at least kind of like check it out. Sure, but I think uh, there's also like a lot of people, you know, that when, when you say that you're going to do like a live action Avatar, I think, you know, the first thing that you're not <laughs> looking for is uh, something that's. Uh, uh, more based on like uh, a CW show, which again, like there's nothing necessarily wrong with CW shows. But certainly, you know, we've watched plenty of them, like with the Flash, oh, yeah. and, and and there's certain things that I think that uh, you know that they can do fantasy kind of well. But uh, I think, with in terms of this, I, I think it's going to be very difficult. I think it's I think they have a big road ahead of them. Um, can it be good? Sure. Like, uh, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, they can't, you know, may somehow pull it off and do something, you know, great out of that. Uh, so I'm not going to say that it's going to be a failure. Uh, but uh, for me, like, that's not uh, like, I, I love fantasy. Fantasy, like, more so than sci fi is my jam. And uh, I'm not and sure, like, uh, you know, you, there's not a whole lot of like fantasy stories that take place like in our world in, in this type of setting. Uh, but I guess I would rather see something more original or something that's a different property uh, with uh, this kind of idea rather than taking uh, elements of an established show and and doing it different like i mean yeah it's a, an original take for sure uh, i can give them that but uh i don't know like i i just have uh i don't know for me it's just not necessarily what i'm looking for and uh but 
again, you know, I, I again, this is what's the, the fun thing about uh, this type of ho- uh, hobby and everything is uh, just having these these kind of conversations. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, and everything. So, uh, you know, certainly I wasn't necessarily expecting, uh, and not to be as much of a bother for you, but uh, you know, that's perfectly fine too, uh, and that's a makes it for a fun conversation for a podcast. But uh, no, uh, you know, definitely you, you have some good points with that and everything. Uh, just uh, I'm not sure it's something that I, especially. I mean, I'll I'll watch the trailer for sure. You know, I at least have you know will be willing to you know give it that. And if it uh, appeals to me, then I'll give it a watch. But if not, uh, it's not something that I'm really going to. Uh, I, a whole lot of investment in i guess that's fair that that is that's very fair and and for me what it is is the one problem that i have with avatar the last airbender like the original series is that the world didn't change all that much in a hundred years when when yeah. you really look at at the world building an avatar the last airbender Aang disappeared a hundred years ago and basically woke up in the same world he left just with a hundred years of war. Right. There, there's no difference. And you and I both know that in the last hundred years, there have been significant changes. Like here in 2021, we're talking to each other over computers, not by telephone or Morse code or anything like that. We're talking in two different countries about the same thing. A hundred years ago, there is no way this could happen because this technology didn't exist. Yeah. No, it's funny because right now I'm, I'm the, I've been elected as the historian for my pipe band and it's our hundredth year anniversary. And so I'm going through uh, all the old pictures and everything of the band, like when it originally came together in 1921 and everything and uh, stuff from like that time period and just being amazed, like, Oh man, like this is the city of Chicago. Like, look how different it looks like uh, and everything like a hundred years ago. Oh, for I sure. Mean, you, you still see elements of like, but what, what became, uh, but uh yeah, I mean, like, let hundred years ago, they still had silent film. Uh, you know, I have, radio was a rare thing. Uh, it was just right after World War One, uh, and even then, like, a World War One, but like that wasn't uh, it wasn't that long ago when it wasn't. Uh, no, we were nineteen twenty one. You're only three years out from World War One. Mm-hmm. And like twenty years away from World War Two, so like a lot of changes happened. The Great Depression, uh, we're right at the beginning of you're right at the beginning of the Roaring Twenties. The Depression hasn't happened yet. There's lots of things that uh, that happened just in that ten years. But that that's that's my that's my whole point with uh, how the cartoon is handled. I, I get it's a cartoon; it needs to be simple. But look at the development that happens between Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra. Now you're looking at an Avatar that's stuck in a more modern world with Korra. Right. That should have happened to Aang. He shouldn't have been woke up in the in basically the same world he left. I think what you could have done was um, have the world that they're in. Uh, really, there should have been more of an influence of the Fire Nation. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Definitely. They, they, there, there wasn't enough of enough of that because they're they're like, like on the verge of winning the war. Like when Ang re- resurfaces, I mean, had he not and resurfaced, just probably another ten years later, the comet would have happened, and the Avatar would have woke up, and in a fire fire nation dominated society, dominated world. Like he he would have been totally irrelevant at that point. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like. That's where this series fails in that regard. It's not a make or break. It's just right. there should have been more. There, there should have been mm-hmm. more colonies, Fire Nation colonies. More cities should have been been Fire Nation controlled. It's 
or at least have seen like the ravages. Yeah, of what yeah, the fire absolutely. Did to it. I mean, when, when like they, well, they, look, look at season two, Bossing Say, like you know, they were hit hard. Iro, um, laid siege to it himself for like years, and when you look at it, when Ang and the gang go to it, there's like nothing there. There, there's no right. indication that anything had happened. So yeah, it, it's just uh, it's one of those background things that uh, that just bugs me a little bit. That's the, some of the things I look at, and uh, um, so I'm interested to see now that you've said that what they do with this, how they play it, because if they're sticking with the hundred years disappearance of the Avatar. And they're putting it in a 2021 setting. We're basically going from 1921 to 2021. I don't know if they're doing the 100 year thing. Well, if they don't do that, then they've totally missed the point. That has That's crucial. That's crucial. If that's not there, it's not worth it. Yeah, I, I could be remembering the... I, I mean, I don't remember them mentioning the 100 year thing at all uh, in the stuff in the video i think it's more of like uh you know ang is more just kind of like uh uh dealing and adjusting at being in a new environment at a new school but he has like uh special uh you know powers or whatever that he's just discovered okay okay if, if that's where they're going with it then it's going to be totally pointless my assumption was that they're doing something along those lines, but you know they're they're pulling the disappearance act, and it's all happening. Not just, oh look, new student. Um, no, that won't work. I think he has his parents, or at least his mother, at least. Yeah, yeah no. If that's what they're doing, this they're 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 basically trying. If that's what if that's what they're doing. They're basically trying to turn Avatar into a CW show like The Flash or Arrow or Supergirl or Black Lightning or um, HBO Stargirl. Um, any of those DC properties that have been in this format already, they're just trying to make it into that, and it's not going to work. This this is not that type of a type of a comic. That won't work. No. If they go the way I was thinking, it could still work. So... We'll just have to wait and see where, where they go with it because if uh, if they're totally changing the point, like you just said, I'm in agreement. That's not going to work. If they're not changing the point and just modernizing it more, that still has the potential to work. But you have to hit all the crucial hundred years missing. Katara still ha like you have to re like you have to remake it as it was mm -hmm. with the core elements anyway. Yeah, and I would say that those those are more important than the setting and location. Oh yeah, absolutely. The setting can be redone. Like the setting being more modern would be perfect. I, I think that would be great. Somebody coming out I mean, hundred yeah. hundred years out of the past. Captain America, for example, he came out a hundred oh, sure. hundred years out of the past into or eighty years out of, in, out of the past into like just using the Cap, uh, Captain America movie the the tag scene at the end. He wakes up and uh, it's twenty. 20 whatever year it was like it was like just a few years ago like new york was modern like new york of today like so that's if they're gonna do that they need a captain america it not high school musical it right yeah no i mean the the whole modernization thing that's what came to my mind first because of it. it's I mean, it is a shocking thing to do for a show like this um but yeah, I think the the whole hundred year kind of thing, and you know, not uh, being in a monastery and everything. Like I think those things are all really core to Aang and Aang's character. Okay. So there is one other thing I, I, I do want to bring up. It, it has nothing to do with Avatar or anything like that. We're, this is totally off off the subject. We beat the we beat the horse to death. Now it's time for something new. And. Uh, did you know that in September they're doing something a little bit different with Star Wars? Really? Yes. Um, I think I looked it up. Um, they're coming out with something called Star Wars Visions. 
and it's Star Wars combined with Dragon Ball is the best way I can uh, put it up. It's like a manga Japanese style Star Wars where the animation is like that manga style. Like even this, even Avatar to some extent. But uh, I, I've seen a picture of uh, I don't know which character it was because it was just a but it's drawn, drawn in the Japanese style, Samurai Jack type style. So that will be interesting to to see. It's coming out in September on uh, Disney Plus, and will be the first um, subject of uh, the soon to be rebooting Star Wars TV talk. In which I've heard, uh, hmm? I've heard of that podcast. Yeah, yeah, I know. We meant I mentioned it to you the other the other day, and when we were doing Mandalorian, I kept referring people to Star Wars TV talk for the more detailed uh, nerdy uh, nerdy things but since though that time they've uh, lost a co-host and that co-host huh. is being replaced with me huh. what yeah I am going to be on Star Wars TV talk as a co-host I've been talking back and forth with Zach uh, the other host for a couple of a couple of weeks now and uh, we're planning on as soon as visions come uh, come out, getting together and doing this doing this style of, of show together, like no pipes or anything like that. But right. well, I'll probably still be smoking, but <laughs> I don't think he will. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I'm going uh, to do that as well. It's it's official. I just don't have an exact date to tell you guys. When I have the details, I will let you know when the first episode drops. It'll probably be in October. Because I think the uh, date for the first episode of Visions is September 22nd. Yeah. Well, first of all, I mean, we talked about it off air before, uh, but uh, congratulations again. Uh, that's awesome. I think you'll do a, a great job at that role. Um, secondly, I think, uh, you know, in reference to Visions, I think that makes logically a lot of sense. Oh, it does. Absolutely. That they're doing it. Uh, for one thing... Um, Manga and uh, anime is just really hot right now. Mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, if you look at like the top twenty graphic novels that are sold each month uh, for the past couple of months, haven't seen any American comics on there whatsoever. It's all but manga. Um, and uh, I. And then, of course, uh, there's the huge influence that uh, Japanese uh, cinema had on George Lucas mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the original uh, Star Wars, uh, with uh, you know being highly influenced by uh, uh, blinking on the name, something like Fortress or whatever. Um, but yeah, a Kurosawa uh, uh, film. Yeah, it was a Kurosawa film or series of films or whatever but that was a heavy influence for George Lucas when he came up with with uh, his his story and uh, yeah so the transition to a manga style animated show um, fits very well so it, it should yeah. be interesting it should be good and I'm looking forward to getting uh, getting nerdy with uh, with Zach on it so um, don't listeners of the show don't look at me for talking Star Wars here because I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, but yeah, once everything's all all said and done, uh, I'll give every, I'll give you all the dates and whatnot because uh, they haven't had a new episode since like February this year. I don't know what happened. Uh, Zach and John were doing a rewatch of Rebels and uh, the Clone Wars, I think, and then they just stopped. I I, I don't know the details. I'm not going to ask the details. I just know that I saw a couple. Of, I saw saw once that he was looking for a co-host but you know I didn't think anything of it and I caught a caught a tweet on the Star Wars TV talk uh, Twitter and they were still looking for a co-host so I DM'd them and said hey um, if you're if you're still looking for a co-host uh, you don't have to worry about equipment because he said he would help whoever with equipment because I've already got it and I'm more than interested not thinking that you know, I'd get a response back the same day and that led to uh a few tweets back and forth because um, he got caught. Uh, he's in Nevada. He got caught in uh, evacuations from the California wildfires that were going on. So uh, 
just getting some things uh, reset with the internet and all the, all the stuff that goes along with that. And um, yeah, so I'm hoping that we can get together and like just do a get to know you episode prior to diving in. But if not, you know, it'll, it'll be interesting. Absolutely. That's cool. I'm happy for you. But also, as I've alluded to just now recently, that this show is not stopping either. I'm going to do both. Two is about the only about the about the maximum limit of shows like this you can do. It's about right. all you can have time for, especially when you're doing the editing and everything for for the one show already. So, mm-hmm. so it'll be fun. It will be fun, and I'm looking forward to it. And it'll add something interesting because both uh, Zach and John were Star Wars nerds, and I am a fan. But I am not an Uber nerd, so it, it'll it'll be like uh, the, ner- the, the it'll be like the Uber nerd with the voice of the regular Joe. So it'll be, yes. it'll be interesting. I think you'll do well. Yes. <clears throat> but all of that being said, I think it's time to cut this sh- uh, this episode off because um, as, was, as I was telling Greg prior to starting recording, um, my son's got a speech therapy assessment in the morning and uh well i need to get to bed so if you want to keep in touch with us throughout the week you can always find me on twitter instagram uh, facebook all the places i have a link tree that has all my links in it that will be down below and i've got all greg's information for twitter instagram all that stuff will also be included down down below and email us email us please that email address gets used for like junk mail from various things that I've attached it to and please somebody send me an email so I can read it (laughs) absolutely yeah DM us uh, comment on our videos and uh, you know if you send us something or ask a question we'll be sure to read it on the on the show alright well all that being said we'll leave you with the standard closing we wish you good smokes great entertainment and we will see you next week Chat with you later.